I'm in tune. Carry level about midway. Peak my drive. My ALC back into the usable zone. So you got about 20 watts out. As Terry N6 TLU. I'm working on a Kenwood 830S. I picked this up at the Monroe Ham Fest about a month ago. And when I got it home, it would transmit, but the ALC function was dead. I thought, well, this is probably a minor problem. So I had all intentions of capturing the whole process on video, and I have some of it to show you. But unfortunately, it got pretty complicated. And I was doing other projects at the same time, so I was not able to focus on the video. So I thought, okay, I'll put together what I can so you guys can understand this problem because I have seen many people writing on forums saying, hey, my ALC either doesn't move or it's pegging. And this radio did both of those things. Well, here's the situation. I got this beautiful Kenwood TS830S. Everything appears to be fully operational except for one thing. There's no ALC reading on the meter while in tune. So I'm gonna go to send. If you look at that watt meter, see I'm putting out about 20 watts and I can peak that with the drive. So it's not a matter that the transmitter is not working, it's a metering issue. So let's see if we can find out what's causing that. Well, here's a quick inside shot of this 830S. This is a gold emblem, four million series, loaded with filters, super clean. I'm gonna trace down the meter select switch cabling, see if we have a loose connection. But while I was in here, I was looking at the pins of the 6146s, where they're soldered onto this board, and there's cracks around every one of those leads. Well, I decided before I go any further, I should get online and see if there's any articles about ALC problems with the Kenwood A30S. I did find some great information from WB4HFN and Terry K9TW. Talked about this identical issue and there's actually some flow charts and other forums talking about how to repair it. But what caught my eye is they mentioned Q30. It's a little FET that's located between those two white pots that you see. The output voltage comes out on this red and white wire. That is the ALM line, which drives the ALC meter. So I have performed some voltage checks to verify the issue to make it easy. I have a good 830, and then I have the bad 830 that has no ALC drive, and I have this gigantic schematic and a service manual. So I've narrowed down the problem, but instead of you watching me putting little probes in the radio and having my hands in the way, I've made up some nifty little charts for you to reference. I've isolated the problem and it is Q30, even though they say it's a rare fault. All right, for your reference, I'm gonna be checking that ALM line, connector four, pin three, which is a red, white wire. See that 4.85 volts? Before I repaired the circuit, that was zero volts, and I had no ALC on my meter reading, okay? Now I've corrected it, so this is what you'd normally see, 4.85 volts. If you look at the schematic, it says 1.3 volts. That is incorrect. I have verified that with three Kenwood experts, including a guy that I call Hollywood, who is a mastermind on the Kenwood A30. So this is normal condition, 4.85 in receive. I'm gonna to go to transmit, you see that 0.4? If I adjust the carrier level, it goes zero to approximately 0.4 volts. That ALM line, which is the meter drive, is working properly. So I'm gonna to cut to these charts for your reference. I just simply took a picture of this area of the board labeled my test points, performed some resistance and voltage checks, and it revealed that Q30, which is a 2SK19, is actually shorted. I went through my goodie boxes, and I've located one. It actually crosses to an NTE133, which of course is an obsolete part. 
Replacing that FET is a bit of a task. You have to remove the IF circuit card that you see here. There are several screws. You can swing it up out of the way. You may have to unplug some of these connectors. I'm going to get that swapped out and retest the A30 and see if we got ALC on that meter. So here's where it gets good. I got a little brain juice to help me keep my story straight. So I verified Q30 was shorted by checking on connector 4, the 9 volt line, to what I called pin C, which was one of the pads on one of the variable pots. And if you look, there was a connection between the drain and source of that FET, and it was 0.5 ohms. I thought, okay, there's no doubt that FET is shorted. So I removed it from the board, bench checked it, and sure enough, dead short. I grabbed a new FET, which was a 2SK19, and I installed it in the radio, and that resistance went up to a little over 100 ohms. I thought, good deal. It has to be a bad FET. So I put her all back together, fired it up, and voila, I got my voltage back on the ALM line, the 4.8 volts. thought, super cool. I fixed it right? Oh no. So then I'm checking the transmit. I go to ALC position, going through my tuna, and as soon as I went to send, bam, the meter pegs. I thought, you've got to be kidding me. So I pulled the IF module back out. I inspected my work, made sure that I didn't put the FED in wrong, which is easy to do, and I even substituted in another FED. Same resistance readings, put the board back in, fired it up, bam, she pegs. At this point, I was getting pretty frustrated, so I reached out to my friend Hollywood. I explained the process that I've been going through and what I was seeing. He said, you put in a bad FET. Put the old one back in and check it. I thought, man, I checked this thing. It's 0.5 ohms. I know it's shorted. There's something else going on. So one thing I forgot to mention, when the radio had no ALC on the meter, I could get full output out of the Kenwood. After repairing that problem and the meter was pegging in the ALC position, I had no output. So I thought, man, what have I done? Turns out it was another problem waiting for me to discover. So I went around and around with this problem and I finally decided I know that the FET that I installed is good. So I'm just going to shelf this thing for a while and sit back and think about it. And of course, while I'm working on other projects, it just keeps going through my head, you know. It's just irritating me. And all of a sudden, I get this idea. I said, you know, I didn't check other voltages in that circuitry. I just assumed when I saw that 4.8 volts appear that I fixed it. Maybe there's something else in that area that's wrong, which is affecting the new FET that I put in. So I started probing around on the board, and sure enough, I found that the ALC line was down to one volt. I checked the good 830, and it was at three volts. I thought, where does that ALC voltage come from? So I reached back out. To my friend Hollywood he said well that comes from the final area it's feedback you know the ALC voltage I was like I'm not transmitting when this is happening it's in receive mode and one eight is at three the other one's at one volt there's something else wrong so I traced the ALC line and I'll bring up my other nifty chart for you guys to look at this on the schematic if you look at the gate of Q30 it's on the ALC line. The line also continues over and goes down to Q29, which is a dual gate FET. I think it's a 3SK73. I thought, ah, so I desoldered the leads on that FET. And that 3K that I saw on the good 830, which was down to 1000 ohms, on the bad 830, jumped right up to about 4K. I thought, aha. So then the search begins. Where do you find a real 3SK73 FET? They're obsolete. There's a lot of copies out there. I didn't want to put some junk in this A30. I wanted to make sure I got the original FET. 
I found a guy on eBay that had two of them, $15 a piece. I bought them, put them in, crossed my fingers, fired it up, it fixed it. So now we're going to check the ALC line on the IF board. It's on connector 5, pin 3, which is this blue-white wire. You see I have 3.3 volts. I'm going to go to send. You see we're at 2.7 volts. So there is a slight transition between transmit and receive. This is the normal level. I'm going to adjust my carrier. That's all the way down. I'm going to bring my carrier up. You see that voltage varies with it. So before I fix the problem with the ALC line, which turned out to be a defective FET Q29, the voltage on pin 3 was at 1 volt, and it would not vary, regardless of whether you're in transmit or receive. Alright, let's tune up the 830. ALC position, I'm in tune. Carrier level about midway. Peak my drive. Bring my ALC back into the usable zone. See, so I got about 20 watts out. Go to CW. Dip the plate. Putting out well over 100 watts. Here is my IP for sideband. Tune. CW. She's working great. Once again, guys, sorry that I wasn't able to provide a full feature video. I'm repairing the ALC issue with the A30. Things just got in the way. Hopefully the things that I did show you is enough to set you in the right direction if you're chasing either of those two faults. These radios are much more complicated to work on than the old tube amps that you normally see me do. But I want to be that 830 guy. I think these are cool radios. There's not many people that are repairing them anymore. So I'm going to do my best to be an expert.